check, check, check. We are here, ready to go. Ready to make a painting. Okay. Um. Welcome everybody to my studio. My name is Michael Markowski and today we are going to be doing a painting of the giant elephant in the room that has been occupying our minds for the past year and depending on, on where you're, you are in the world, maybe a few weeks or months earlier. But those of us here in Canada, March 11th marks well, I guess anybody in the world, March 11th, 2020, was the day that the uh, World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic. And for many of us, that changed everything. If, uh, if you kind of go back in your mind a little bit and think about where you were and what you were doing around that week, you probably remember things changed changed very quickly very fast and so today what I want to do is uh, not celebrate this anniversary because it's a pretty grim anniversary we'll get into all of some of those details as we go but um, I've been now streaming and doing live videos for a, a year now and pretty much the the week of this hit I also just sort of by chance decided I was going to be doing uh, these live streams. And so this also marks a, a major anniversary for myself as well. So um, here you can just see here, uh, this is the article from that actual day back in uh, uh, 2020. It seems like ages ago. Um, and obviously the coronavirus began before that and, and a lot of people uh, got sick and died before March 11th, so it's not like it all of a sudden just appeared. Um, but m by March 11th, all of a sudden, it uh, was kind of it was out of control. Really, is is kind of what a pandemic uh, really is. And so we'll just sort of take a look at a few different articles here that were in the news. I'm a big sports fan or a hockey fan, really, and I remember March 11th because at that on that night. The NBA canceled a game right before it was going to begin, and the NHL played a hockey game through, but the next day both, pretty much every sports league across the world instantly came to a grinding halt, which uh, <laughs> if you're a sports fan, is like, what do I do? How do I fill my evenings? Um, there's There's been a lot of articles all over the web um, over the past couple of days about this anniversary and how different countries have reacted to it. And when I was kind of putting together what I wanted to do on this day, I was thinking about all sorts of different kinds of images and uh, images like the, if you remember the Rosie Riveter, you know, the, there's the woman with kind of her, she's, you know, given her, she's, uh, it was from World War II. There, in fact, let's just bring that up here. Because um, I was contemplating doing an image like this. Although in my drawing class that I did last year, we did a drawing just like this. So I was like, hmm, I've already done a drawing like that. Do I want to do this a same drawing in a painting class? And I was thinking about a lot of different things and thought, you know what, like all for me anyway, and you're welcome to do whatever you want to do to for this uh, anniversary. But I was thinking, you know what, I, I don't want to dance around this thing, which I have been doing for the past year. Because if you're a YouTuber, just mentioning COVID, putting it in the title, all of a sudden, like your video gets demonetized. There's all, most videos would just immediately get shut down and turned off. Things have kind of changed a little bit. But for anybody on who is a content creator on YouTube, COVID was like the, the thing you could not talk about. You could not mention. In fact, even still today, 
when I was putting together this video, I noticed that things have kind of gone a little bit funny, let's just say, with this video. So I imagine that very few people are going to be watching it, probably because it's being buried in the in the uh, the leads a little bit. So anyway, the, you know, this image I saw just doing some research, and I was like, oh, I love this this illustration, which was produced. We'll we'll take a look at his uh, some of his illustrations here. A second and you know then I started looking at some of these other images and one of the things that you know I I have not personally had anyone that I know of gotten sick or passed away from the COVID-19 virus so I have um, which I'm very fortunate for and very fortunate our family has um, so far knock on wood come through things fine but when I look at these images, obviously, you know, I, th I think about COVID and the destruction it's caused across the world, but I look at them and, and I also think these are really beautiful pictures. Like, obviously, all of these are di digital illustrations created by other artists who have used their imagination to help us visualize what the virus looks like. The actual virus itself looks much closer to this, which is maybe not so interesting. And when you see something like that, you're like, that is the thing that has been terrorizing the world for the past year. Interesting. Um, and, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a tricky thing to, to say, like, there's this horrible thing that's caused global destruction, but I find an aspect of it, you know, uh, aesthetically beautiful, right? Like it's... Um, and so, anyway, uh, I, one of the reasons why I wanted to do today's episode and also to paint the actual coronavirus, let me see, is, um, is to show that, like, nothing is beyond redemption. There's a long history of artists painting um, events from history that are graphic, that are violent, and um, both to, to remember them and to to depict those moments for history, because remember, cameras have only been around for about 150 years. Um, but I also think, like, part of what artists do is look at these terrible things and think about, like, how can I extract from this horrible, horrible moment and in this scene and, and of chaos and torment, how can I extract something beautiful from it? And try to like use the power of art to like, you know, like turn it around and see if we can make find the silver lining on this horrible tragedy. So you know, I just while we're sort of talking about some of these things, you know, um, uh, you know, we could see the the amount of cases that that we've had across. Um, British Columbia in Canada, you know, here's this grim total of 22,371, which is already, you know, from when I posted the video or the, the, the thumbnail is doing research, that's 31 people higher than it was just yesterday or last night, which is terrifying, right? And we think about, like, look at this total from uh, around the world, 2.62 million people or 118 million people who had it, right? So it has caused this huge catastrophe around the world. So we looked at that. So, and it's now a day of remembrance here in Canada to, uh, you, know, you know, think about and acknowledge all the people that have passed away over this time. Just before we move into the painting itself, I think I just want to just mention the, the photograph that we're going to be working from was created by this artist, uh, Yuchiro Chino, and I tried, did my best to try to find like an Instagram or Twitter. I couldn't find anything except he has been producing lots of images, uh, photographs and illustrations that often accompany articles in the newspaper or magazines, just like today's image. So I always want to acknowledge that this is an image created by another artist like ourselves and we're going to use it as inspiration for our own image. Now you'll see, if you look in the, the video description below, there's a link to a Dropbox folder. 
and you click on the Dropbox folder and it'll open up this, um, in, there's a, within that, this folder. And inside there, you'll find three files. There's a JPEG and a PDF version of the outline and then the original image accredited to the artist himself there as well. So you can print that off and then you will have this to work from. Now, what's kind of a little bit interesting about today is I've been thinking a lot about how to make this picture because this picture is a bit of, you know, there's, we could spend weeks painting this image. It's a gorgeous, beautiful illustration, but we're obviously going to try to get this painting done within the next two and a half hours at max, if we can help it. So I just give my uh, canvas board an a extra little sanding. As you know, I apply a little bit of extra gesso on it and let it dry so that we can kind of fill in some of the little uh, the grooves here, which makes our lives easier when we're painting. Um, personally, what I would do is put some gesso on, sand it, put more gesso on and sand it so that you can get like a basically a paper smooth surface. And that is a lot of fun to paint on. If you can paint on a really smooth surface like that, um, it, uh, for many people, Many people, when they're using acrylic paint, often use put a lot of water in their paint because they want that smooth painting feeling. And uh, I would say putting water in your acrylic paint um, most of the time is, is the biggest mistake beginner or intermediate or even advanced artists make when they're painting. Um, because as we've seen in this class, there's many alternatives that are much, much better um, than water. So I'm just gonna get out some of my supplies. The best material, if you're thinking, if you want a bit of a smooth texture or smooth painting process would probably be to use slow dry medium to add um, uh, some binder back in there. And, or even better would be to use fluid acrylics which these, the one, what we've been using are called heavy body acrylics or medium body acrylics. Fluid acrylics are, I've mentioned this before, but you can kind of hear it next to my microphone there, right? So it's literally a fluid, right? If I pour this out, it drips really nice and easily, makes for really nice, um, Kind of texture to paint with when you're doing like outlines and small details. Um, okay, so when I was thinking about making this painting, that looked really out of focus, didn't it? Hmm. Let's let this camera focus. Come on, come on, camera. Okay, um, when I was thinking about doing this painting and I want that dark background, there's many ways that we can make that happen. For most of the time what we've been doing so far is painting, let's say a, a lighter color like a yellow or, um, or a red in behind and then using that to build up colors on top of, right? Now, our, which we can still do today, but I think I wanna to try to doing something a little bit different. And we can use our, um, the outline to do this. Um, but there's a, anyway, let, I'll show you a few different ways. I think I might actually do some eyeballing of this drawing rather than trying to trace it. But um, because, let me just show you a couple of different things. So we could trace it using carbon paper. I also have white uh, carbon paper or graphite paper and j often people use this white material or white graphite paper for tracing onto dark or colored fabric right so you can get this I got this through Amazon but you can buy you know if you go to any uh, fabric store I'm sure that you should be able to buy something like this um, but I am I'm assuming probably most of you don't have that material so 
Let's, um... I wonder... Because, you see, what I'm thinking about is... is uh, I want to... Like in the image here, we've got this, you know, very dark background with these dark blues, and it kind of lightens up a little bit on the side. And if we want to get that same sort of a little bit of a variety of colors in here, trying to do that by putting, by painting, and then painting around all of these shapes is literally going to drive us absolutely bonkers. Right, so let me think. Um, you know what I'm going to, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some carbon paper after all. Uh, but I think I'm really only going to focus on tracing the center image. And I'm not going to use the white paper, even though this would be, be my best choice for doing this activity. Um, or maybe I can show you a little bit of how it works. Okay, so let's, I'm going to tape this down for, let's put that down here. And, okay. Obviously it doesn't really matter if it's crooked or not, it's going to be, <laughs> Um, it's going to be fine whichever direction it's pointed. It's a circle, right? So I'm going to do a very, very quick uh, tracing of this. And as I said, mostly I'm just going to focus on getting the circle kind of in place. Um, yeah, maybe let's, I'll do a few of these, the ones that go inside of this shape. And you see I'm being pretty lazy about, because these, I'm going to paint over everything here. You'll see very soon how I approach this. I'm really only concerned at this point with the ones that are overlapping the circle. Okay. I mean, I, let's, I'll just put these in here. But again, I think a lot of these things are going to move around as I paint here. All right, so... That's my image, and you can see I didn't even bother doing a lot of this stuff around the sides. Okay. Um, so, to get that really nice dark color in the background of this image, we're going to put some paint on the on our palette and obviously it's going to be predominantly a dark dark blue. So let's put some colors on here. Might as well put all the colors that we're going to use on here. I often I need to relabel these tubes. I, I usually write like warm and cool on them. I, I do that for my uh, students when I'm, I got in the habit of doing that when I was teaching so that people could easily um, find which tube they wanted of which color. But I've, I've found it's actually been really helpful for myself. <laughs> you know, when I'm teaching these classes and I'm, you know, talking and chewing gum at the same time, there's times where you've seen me put the colors in the wrong place many times. <sighs> I think that one's done. Put. Okay. So to get this really dark blue, let's get a brush to mix it up. One of the things I often do when I 
get a brush, even a brush I've been using for a while, especially these cheaper brushes, right? We've been using, I think the, the highest quality for the price that we that I would recommend for our purposes. So, but the lower end brushes tend to kind of fall apart a little bit. And so I always kind of just, you know, run my hands over them, try to pull some of those hairs out at this stage, rather than when I'm actually got paint on my canvas, and then I'm trying to, you've seen me try to pick those things out, it drives me nuts. Okay, so this is gonna be in the background. So we're pr gonna use primarily cool blue. Let me see if I can mix this dark color first. And if I want, I can always add a little bit of black to it just to kind of push it a little bit further. I'm gonna need a little bit more. Let's, we're gonna need lots of cool blue for this anyway, so. Put a little bit more down. Let's get that on the brush, the cool blue. Man, Deborah says, a year ago, um, I was uh, friends in an art class with a developmentally challenged. I've not seen them for a year now, and they're extremely vulnerable. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, it's one of the tragedies of COVID is that the people, the most vulnerable, the most vulnerable people in our society were the people who were hit hardest, right? Um, which is, you know... Like one of the, you know, that's, I think, you know, if you can imagine, imagine the COVID struck teenagers or, um, you know, people in their early 20s the most. It has, I'm not saying it hasn't because some people think it is only um, uh, a virus that has affected, you know, seniors, but imagine it, it, its primary victims were younger people. I think things would have unfolded very, very differently in our society in, over the past year. Anyway, okay, so we've got our cool blue. I'm going to take some of the warm blue as well. And since I just got my finger into the cool red, I'm going to take some of that. So you see, I'm kind of, it, right now it's, we've got this kind of a dark purple. Um, I'm actually gonna, I'm going to squeeze in some of the the warm yellow right out of the tube, so I don't even bother getting any paint in here. So as I mix this together, what's happening is basically. I have mixed this color, this color, this color, and that color together, right? So we've seen what happens when we mix these two colors together, right? We get this kind of a little bit more of a brown, uh, purple, right? So we add these together, right? We're kind of approaching the neutral core, but then we take a big helping of this and it just sucks because basically we're kind of We've got this type of color. We're sort of around here, and then we added this, and it's pulled us towards the neutral core. Now, if it looks still very green like this, all we gotta do is add some more red into the mixture. And now we've got, I'm not sure how it turns out on the screen, but that is, of like a pretty dark color. It looks kind of muddy, which is not, I don't mind that. Um, but this is about as dark of a color as we're going to be able to get with our, uh, our so-called primary colors here. And I quite like, I like this actually a lot. Um, so you know what? I'm going to paint that, that color on here because we can always modify it. I'm just going to put a little bit of water on to make it spread a little bit easier. Because I also really want it to get into all the little nooks and crannies of the canvas. So I want to cover up all of the white on there. Just stir that in. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna paint this. Let's just so we can see side by side. And you know what? I'm gonna slide this thing under here just for just for this first stage because I, <laughs> I like going over these edges. You can see, remember, remember how I said I wasn't going to, I didn't bother doing all of those other little, uh, I don't even know what you would call, I'm not a scientist, so I don't even know what the, these things are called, but uh, I'm just going to paint right over and around with them. I was even contemplating just painting this whole thing like this, but... Uh, I always like getting the sides of my painting in there. Okay, so I'm going to blow dry that and we'll get it, um, get that to go dark. That's pretty darn close color for what we see on the screen, but I think we're, when we get this dry, we'll put another color on top of it. And then, uh, or actually we'll blend a couple of colors over top of it. Okay, so I could I could just use this exact color that I did and just put another layer over top of it. I think um, I'm going to take this color and maybe just modify it a little bit. So I think I'm going to put make it just a little bit more blue, a little bit of warm blue in there. One more cool blue back in here. There we go. I kind of like that. That's okay. So I'm going to take this color and yeah, I'm going to paint this. Ooh, that's nice. I don't know how well that turns out on camera, but it's like a really nice, dark, cool color. I 
because I kind of I like in the illustration how the uh, artist has like the light coming from one side and I, I want to emulate a little bit of that it kind of makes it look very spacey doesn't it so I'm just gonna let's say I'm, I'll, I'm gonna use as much of the I don't have to cover this whole other side because I'm gonna put another color there and I'll blend it in but if I've got a little bit of extra paint, I'll just, it doesn't hurt to spread it over here and just hide that whatever was there before. Okay, so I'm going to blow dry. So I just want to make sure I really get into, sorry, my head's in the way there. This is the only thing I'm concerned about, that side there. Okay. Okay, so that looks like it's pretty good. So now what I want to do is I'm going to sort of just, and there's there's many different ways to do this. So I'm, I'm by all means, I'm not suggesting this is the only way to approach this exercise. But I, I, I do think this might be among one of the easier things for some beginner artists to do. So I'm going to kind of recreate this color a little bit. I'm just going to lighten it up. A little bit as well and I'll show you I'm just gonna add maybe a little bit of white in there so I've just gone and put basically all the same colors that were there and we'll just kind of mix this together one more time I love that what it looks like when we're mixing it Ooh, looks so beautiful And who knows, maybe I like this color and I can use it in shadows and stuff or for outlining later on now that we know how to mix a really, really dark color. So again, this was cool blue, primarily cool blue, warm blue, cool red, and warm yellow. You could put cool, I mean, either yellow I think would be fine. Maybe the, the warm yellow is just a little, makes it... A little bit darker I would say okay so I got this mixture here and let's just we'll just just for the sake of convenience we'll, we'll put a little bit of white in there so you see I'm putting just a little bit right here and I'm going to scoop up some of this paint kind of a big helping of it We'll put it right here, and we're going to stir this in. Not a lot. But it's already different. Right? We'll see. We're going to... We don't want to go too, too far just yet. So now I'm going to take some slow-dry medium. And put 
you know, a generous helping in there. Let's stir this up. Move that out of the way. So what we're about to do is we're going to paint that, this new color that's just a little bit more white on this side. And then I also have my new blending brush I got just the other day. And I'm, so I'm going to paint that and then I'm going to just kind of blend it into a little bit of the darker side of things here. Okay. So I'm just going to paint this on this side. You could see shows up on camera quite nicely as a lighter color. Right, and then I'm just gonna take it and just kind of blending it in. And notice how I did that first, and then I came down here. Don't worry about, make, see how I'm making, bringing paint into the center of the can. Don't worry about that. dry that and then we'll see if we want we can even make a little bit lighter again let's just see how it looks
Okay, so, so far, I mean, that effect is pretty subtle. Just take, it's very, very hard to see any difference, but that's okay, because I want to do maybe one more pass, and I'll maybe make it a, a little bit brighter. You can see, look at that. Now, that's dramatically brighter. Can't, and, and I'm sure some people are watching and be like, why, are, why not just do this wet on wet? Like just wet paint on wet paint. You can absolutely do that. Absolutely. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I just, you know, I think of this as like a beginner's painting class. And when you're painting wet into wet paint, it's, um, it's, it's a little bit, uh, it takes more confidence to paint that way. Sorry, I've just mixed more white and put a little bit of slow dry medium in here. Um, because when you're painting wet on wet, if you make a mistake, you're, you got to kind of live with it or you got to make it work. And ultimately that's where we want to get to, but I kind of want to, I want to try to give people as much courage and confidence as possible by showing them a way that will work, will absolutely work. And if you paint that way for a while and then you, you feel like you've got that, then, then move to the next stage, right? Okay, so you can see now this is dramatically brighter. Maybe a little bit brighter than I want, but just for the sake of like the camera, when I make it kind of subtle, it maybe doesn't show up so well. So we're gonna use, do the same thing with a much brighter color here, or a brighter tint. We've just tinted the, that color, right? So here, let's see, so you can see how that is much, much brighter. As I said, I probably, I wouldn't really say this would be the best solution for everybody, but I'm just going to go dramatically brighter just so that it, the other one didn't quite, wasn't as effective on camera. All right, so let's do that down here. So I painted that and then I, I was not quite happy. So what I did is I just took a little bit of water, put that on my blending brush. And we'll see how. That works. Just to integrate that a bit better. Okay, I think that's good enough to move on, right? So, um, where's my rags? Here we go. So you could, you know, <laughs> this, doing this kind of thing at the very beginning, like, is a bit of a pain. And, I, you know, I think when we're painters, we all, we, we're anxious and restless and we want to move get the painting running faster and 
get to the details, but if we spend a little bit of time making a kind of a nice background, especially on a relatively simple composition like this, it will pay off later on. Okay, so um, I could blow dry this, but I'm, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to paint inside of here. So, um, and maybe you also just in case people were wondering what I was doing last time I was blow drying is this was a little bit of white kind of showing through the side there. So I just I still had some of the darker paint and I just did a little touch up there on the side. Okay, so looking at this original image, what I want to do now is I'm going to put a color in to a kind of a base color. And I'm going to use something around this kind of orangey, peachy color. I'm going to put that down. Or actually, you know, hmm. You know what I'm actually going to do before I even do that is I'm going to paint all of these kind of uh, white or these, what should we call these little uh, things that are sticking off of the, anybody who's a scientist can, can correct me and tell me what those things are that are on this thing. <laughs> um, uh, because I have no idea what any of the technical terms for viruses are here, but uh, I'm going to, I'm actually going to blow dry this and then I'm going to use the white and I'm going to clean up this shape and then that way I can paint things over top of this dark background. Good enough. Some of the other parts are still a little bit wet, but we're not going to be painting that just yet anyway. So, okay. So I'm going to put some white here on my palette. Just pure white right out of the tube. And I'm just going to grab my image. So it's kind of, I'll just put it side by side here so that I can see as I'm painting. In fact, maybe I'm going to go to a little bit smaller brush. Okay. Um, so one of the things I could have done all the way from the beginning is let's say I could have taped this to the canvas and then did a, a drawing, found my circle, and then at this point pulled it back down and put some of the white graphite paper underneath and then traced it and I would have all those shapes. We could have done that, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball a little bit of this here. So I'm looking, let's, uh, I'll just kind of show this view here. Let's move this over here. So I'm just going to kind of, that's why I made a few little things like this. So I could see, okay, this is going to be here. What are the overlapping forms here? I think there's another one down here. So if I had tried to do this, if I, if I had painted all of these shapes and then tried to do the background, then I would be having to paint all around all of these shapes. And, you know, it's possible we can do it, but 
not only would it ultimately take longer, but we would have, we would see the evidence of all of that work in the background. The background would look a little bit choppy and we wouldn't be able to get these kind of the nice smooth qualities that we have currently here. So looking at I'm, gonna st I'm just starting with some of these. You see, I've got these lines here. So the ones that are kind of in the on the front, and then we can decide as we go how many of the ones that are um, surrounding it, how many of those we want to put on here. I do want to make sure I'm, I don't have any white on my hands. It's going to get onto this picture. All these, uh, I'll call them like light bulbs. How's that? My uh, high school science teacher is probably rolling around in his grave right now. I think I've mentioned before that, you know, when, I, when I've been signing my, my paintings at the end, one of the things that famously happened in one of our science classes is, is my best friend uh, who still to this day, you know, 20 years later, still my very best friend. Him and I in science class would spend most of our time drawing comic books and so much so that even during exams, I he would be drawing and I would do the tests and then he'd copy my answers and one day he he copied the answers so faithfully that he even copied my name down on the top of his test. And the teacher was like, Michael, why did you, you've, I've, you've handed in two answer sheets for the, the quiz or whatever. And <laughs> my friend Jesse, I, oh, oh uh, actually that one's mine. The teacher's like, what? Why did you put your name or Michael's name down on the test. Of course, so he just had to kind of pretend he was a complete moron, <laughs> but <laughs> because he didn't want to admit that he was, you know, copying my answers. Um, let's see, just these little specks from my hand get around here. I can fix, touch those up a little bit later, but if you don't have to touch them up, then that's even better. So when you're doing these, you can make a decision to add more of these little light bulb things, or you can add less of them. You can subtract them and you can, you, one thing I would say as we're doing this is it's probably a good idea to try to randomize them so that they, um, they don't all look super even. like a bicycle wheel or something. It's kind of nice for them to be um, like in this illustration. Some are larger than others. Some are, they appear kind of grouped together. Also consider that the more of these you put down, it's going to take a little bit of time to to paint them all too. So if you have a lot of them, it's going to take you a little bit longer to, to complete the painting. And you know, if you make a mistake here, I'm just going to put, oh, you know what? there's going to be a little one right there. So no right or wrong way to do this pro whole process, right? Also, some of these ones that are maybe a little bit further on the other side of this shape are going to be a little bit smaller.
each person now painting this painting is going to do have a little bit of a different kind of look on them, which is good that we're not just uh, we're going to be creating lots of different versions of this very same image. And you know, little things like this, if I've got a little mistake or whatever, I'm just going to touch that up while I've got that same color that's wet. Just dab a little bit here and there. Um, Okay, so, you know, one of the things, as I'm doing this, you know, one of the things that I'm doing is just kind of squinting my eyes while I look at it, right? Close my eyes like I'm about pretending to sleep, and I just look at this shape, and I want, I'm looking to see, you know, how it looks, you know, because we really have kind of basically a silhouette, right? This uh, dark background with this light shape on top, white, so... I want to just, I'm thinking to myself, do I like how this looks? Is it kind of full enough? Are there gaps? And do, like, so for instance, right now, there's a bit of a gaps maybe here. And so, but which is not a bad thing. It's not like I want to completely fill it in and there can be some gaps. I just want to think, you know, I've obviously changed things a little bit from the original. So can I live with all of that there? Um, kind of feel like I need something here, another, another one there. And I don't know. I, I might. I. I want to keep the random quality of this, so I don't want to go too far into kind of making it too symmetrical, right? Because that's not the way these kind of things are, right? I'm also just now just covering up a last little bit of blue. We're going to put another color over top of this in a second. If we'd put that other color directly onto this right here, we would probably have to do two or three um, coats of it. Putting the white down first just speeds up that process. Okay, just going, speaking of other coats, just another little coat of white. 
And that can also help, especially if you've got a pretty strong ridge of paint here, it's, this can really help kind of cover up, you know, uh, cover up any texture that's sort of been building up there, or that was built up on that first layer. You don't have to really do too much of this. This is just, this will just make our lives easier as we go forward. And, you know, it's, it's okay to have a little bit of that blue shining through because there are going to be some shadows in here anyway, right? Okay, I think that's good enough. So, let's, we're, we'll blow dry this. And then we're going to be ready to dive into the center of the main part of this picture. Okay, and just while I was there, you saw me also just doing a little tinkering, trying to kind of, uh, there was a few specks that, you know, as paint dries, sometimes patches get lighter or darker, and I noticed there was a few little patches that looked like I had missed a bit, so. Okay. Now we can just go back to this. You can maybe see a little bit more clearly the transition here. It's a little bit abrupt there down here it's a little bit smoother which is generally preferred okay um okay i see in the chat there are people saying you know, uh, one of the benefits of, uh, of not benefits, but I guess positives that has come out of COVID is, is that it's brought us together, right? That we now are, you know, months and months and months now here together painting every Tuesday and Thursday together. And we formed this great community. And I, one of the things I think is, is, is fantastic about COVID uh, or one of the outcomes is that um, I am, I'm actually really amazed at how well the world has come together to deal with this. I know there's people out there who say, you know, like certain countries and leaders have, you know, done a really poor job and that's, there is, there certainly way more people died than had to, 
Having said that, considering some of the animosity between various different countries in the world, the fact that even countries that are, you know, uh, uh, not getting along at all have collaborated to create uh, vaccines together and are sharing them and not gouging one another. Uh, not that, that there aren't people who are profiting immensely off of the pandemic, unfortunately. Um, but the fact that, you know, we're here a year later and vaccine is being rolled out and um, that is some I was I was probably the thing I was most worried about is like uh, is how like the you know I, I, just with the global tensions that are going on I, I did not think there was going to be as as much um, uh, uh, working together as there has been now could they do better absolutely but could they have done a far worse job terrifyingly things could have also gone worse <laughs> which you know um anyway so what i want to do now is what was i gonna do i was gonna i want to um i want to get this peachy color in uh we're gonna put a kind of peachy color over pretty much everything right now and that's going to give us a nice kind of base layer. So this that could have been, we could have maybe even, well, no. I, I was going to say we could have done that first, but then we would have had to do it again. So, ha, 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 I'm not crazy after all. Okay, let's get a bitter, bigger brush to, okay. So we've got kind of a, a cool color in the background. So we want a warm color in the foreground. So to get this warm kind of peachy color, I'm going to take warm yellow. Get that in my brush. Let's take warm red. We're going to make an orange here. And then I'm going to take some white. And mix this in. Kind of like a, uh, let's do a little bit more white. And I'm now going to take just a tiny smidgen of blue. We'll put that off to the side. The blue is going to just give it a, a tiny bit less of a orange quality and a little bit more of a little bit. So it won't be quite so intense. That's good. I like this color a lot. I mean, you could see I, I there might have been one grain of blue in there, but it, it does. Those dark colors change things pretty quickly. Okay. So once again, I'm going to put a bit of slow dry medium just to kind of help with the brushability here and spreading it around and also if I make a mistake I've got just an extra like 10 seconds to you know deal with it before it's baked into the canvas okay so we'll change places here I'm going to use a smaller brush for this And then I'm just going to quickly apply this all over all my white here. I don't have to be, it, if I miss a little bit, that's okay, because I'll probably paint over most of this in a bit anyway. But if I do cover all the white, then I don't have to worry about, about covering it later, right? I could potentially leave a lot of this exposed with this color. Now, I think some people would say, well, why why do all that white? You put white into this, why not just make this peachy color, like, 
and just use that as that we could have skipped a, a step and my answer would be well if we try to do get the same have the same amount of white in this color it would be like very very white right it wouldn't and white is the has the best covering qualities of, of any other paint it's the most opaque of all of them so um, this color would have been uh, either very 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 white um, or I would have to do like five or six coats of this same thing over top of the black So there's always a trade-off, you know, if you think like, oh, you're going to save time in one way or the other, you are going to have to, there's, there's going to be, you know, for every action there's a equal and opposite reaction, or, I don't know. Um, so, you can never get off, you know, t super easy. There's some things that make, you can go a little bit faster on, but... You know, also, if you were making this and you're like, you know what, I don't know if I want to make a COVID virus painting. You could turn this into a, a, a planet. You could have spaceships flying around it. and um, I was contemplating painting this in a much more kind of modernist style and rather than doing that kind of blended background painting it in like that but uh, which I think I will do more of that kind of stuff in future episodes but um, I just decided to do because we haven't done like a really dark background like this yet so thought I would use this as an opportunity to kind of show how I would um, tackle this with based on some of the other techniques that we've used so far for much brighter backgrounds. You know, I was thinking this morning as I was getting ready, you know, there's all these articles talking about like how the world has, has changed or, you know, um, how they're the new normal or whatever. It's not like things are going to go back to the way they were. Um, and so I was starting to think like, well, there's, this is not obviously the first pandemic that's ever occurred. And, um, there were a previous, you know, there was the so-called Spanish flu back in, well, about basically a hundred years ago. And so I was asking, my, thinking to myself, like, I wonder how, like, how did, maybe there's an article out there if somebody's read it, but I was, I'd be curious, like, how did, like, this, that flu in 1917, like, how did that changed the world like what was how were things before that and then like and did did people go end up eventually going back to their old ways you know and, and then it made me think about like how you know grandparents like my grandparents were uh, born 
right around that time, a little bit afterwards, in the early 20s. And just thinking, and they also, like, my grandfather had polio, and thinking about, like, how you know, that would have altered his world view on things, and um, so, I'm, you know, because people are, you know, as I said, I'm a sports fan, and they're, you know, there's, I saw on the news in Texas, the Texas Rangers baseball team is planning on opening their season, which begins, I think, in a few weeks, in a, in, at full capacity. They want the, their baseball stadium to be completely full of people which to me just sounds completely insane um, it's not like we're out of the woods yet um, but and you know as a, as a sports fan I don't know um, I'm not I'm not rushing to get into a, a, a stadium full of other people just yet I I haven't been vaccinated. I don't I don't know anybody who has actually. Um, and yeah, so I I don't know. I'm just those are all the little things that kind of bang around inside my skull as I'm brushing my teeth. Is How quickly did people return to so-called life as normal after the previous pandemic? And you know, I guess there was that the whole SARS thing in Toronto. Uh, I guess about ten years ago. When, when was that? I think it was two thousand and seven or something around there. I think it was two thousand eleven, maybe. And I wonder how many people. I mean, and, you know, obviously that, um, compared to COVID had, was, a, was much smaller scale, but, uh, I wonder, I'm sure there's a few people out there who that, obviously if they lost family members, that probably altered their, the way they go about things quite dramatically, pretty quickly, right? One of the things I think we will see for a long time afterwards is I think people will be wearing masks for for a long time. Um, I know that obviously there's some people who never believed in masks in the first place, but I don't know. I'm uh, even after all this is done, I don't know. It made me kind of more conscious of just getting the flu and um, anyway. Okay. Uh, I'm reading the comments there. Um, Lori says the 1920s came after i think everyone will be ready to party <laughs> that's right uh, <laughs> the swing in 20s um so maybe maybe we're in for like a, a a major boom in um in all sorts of as you know maybe people will go the complete opposite direction and we will have um I don't. Know, I don't even know what what that would mean. <laughs> Off the top of my head, like, wow, you know the. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be. I, I've throughout this whole thing, always just thought like this is, we we're living through very very interesting times, All right? There's that saying, "May you live in interesting times." <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm sure some people would rather it to be a little bit less interesting. Um, but, uh, anyway, 
Okay, so we've got this coat of paint there. You know, you can see it's not totally even, and there's a few little spots where some white showing. That doesn't bother me at all. I just wanted to kind of get a base layer in so the majority of the white was covered. And also I can use this as part of like the, the, the radiating light that's kind of coming through some of these shapes. So if we look at um, this, you know, I, I guess I could have gone a little bit more pink in there, but whatever, right? Um, so where should we begin now? is the question. I think what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to paint all of the these light bulb things as I've called them. I'm going to paint them all kind of like a pink, a kind of rosy pink. So I'm gonna, I think you can use the same color here. And I'm just going to add a lot more uh, red to it. So let's just take this. We'll take a bit of... Okay. So this will help us kind of sort out where they all are. Uh, from that central shape that we had. And you know what? I'm going to put a little bit of slow dry medium on here as well. Okay. So, and you know what? I'm going to go to just a smaller brush. So this is just uh, warm red mostly and a little bit of, uh, of um, uh, sorry, warm red and a little bit of warm yellow. So I'm going to go over all of these things one more time. And I really like how that orange that was shining through there is still there. I think it actually gives, makes these, even though I'm painting right over top of it, it just makes them seem to kind of glow a little bit. Just be careful, this is still a little bit, in fact, I'm just gonna blow dry it. so concerned about getting paint all over the place. to have my image nearby here to refer to.
kind of nice to feel like it's this painting starting to develop. There was kind of a, a lot of stuff that we did to kind of get going, right? And, and I know it can, can make people a little bit impatient having to kind of do those first steps before we even get into the painting. But ultimately, it's all worthwhile, I think. If you're kind of, if you find yourself like at this point, you kind of get lost as to which ones are kind of in front or kind of on the side or behind, you could use um, just your regular HB pencil. You know, you go over here and go, okay, this one, let's say this one will go in front. You could just sort of draw these lines back in there. But personally, I'm just going to, especially with a composition like this that is fairly simple, like it's not going to make a difference to me whether which one is in front or behind, but it wouldn't surprise me if some people found that a little confusing and they wanted just... Um, a little assistance. And I'm just making random choices. It's I'm not really concerned about... It's not like this is uh, the one virus and that there's could be a scientist out there who sees this painting and is just like horrified that we've only painted, I don't know, 30 of these things, light bulbs, on there instead of 31. And instead of describing the COVID 19, we have painted the SARS virus or something and humiliated ourselves in the process. We could, uh, you, you could be painting each one of these and, and doing wet on wet blending to get the shadows at every single step of the way. You could do that. I think it would just take a lot longer. And the other thing is, I, I, another thing I think about as a teacher who's, who's painting with people who are you know beginning is that you know, it's often, like, I think most of us want to try to get the painting done in one sitting, if possible. That's my goal, anyway, is to try to make these paintings in, sometimes, in around, like, a two to three hour period. I know we've some, some of them have gone on for a little bit longer than that, but my goal, anyway, is to try to, to do them as quickly as possible. And so one of the things I think about is, is I want to be able to, to, to get the painting to a stage that if we had to stop, you know, let's say in 20 minutes, when we've got these little red things on there, we could stop in 20 minutes. Would it be like a, a, a most amazing painting ever? No. But, you know, it wouldn't be horrible either. It would be kind of maybe something even kind of interesting. 
And so I'd rather have a painting that that looks like it could be almost done um, than a painting that has one area that is clearly done, but the other 95% of it is totally unfinished. Because that, to me, makes the painting look you know, I, that's just something I find really hard to to live with. Because then I'll forever look at it and think, like, ah, oh, there's one part that's done, but everything else is, like, really unfinished. And so. so you see now, I might, like, instead of there was one going to be here, I'm going to put it right there. Bit of its stem that will shade later on. Yeah, my goal would be to make a really cool, beautiful painting of the coronavirus. And there's something about that that feels like, as, a, as an artist, that's the, the best thing that I can do. You know, if I can take this... Um, this incident or, or major global event and turn it into art, um, then it is, then it doesn't have power over me. It doesn't have, it's not this thing that I'm afraid of. You know, it's, it's like, uh, it, I've kind of used, I've taken its power away, and I've, I've, um, what is an analogy to it? It's like, I think any analogy that I, I make to a global catastrophe sounds glib, but, you know, I, I, I think like, you know, when you see comedians who, who, make fun of themselves you know maybe it's their weight or their hairline or the way they talk or walk or whatever um it it, it sort of disarms the crowd you know people in the crowd who are willing or but to like heckle them and make fun of them they come out and like the first thing they do is point out the kind of the obvious and it sort of disarms anyone who's who wants to sort of try to use that against them. They've already kind of, so they've taken that, that weapon away from, from those people. And I, I always admired that. I always thought that that was a really clever way of uh, dealing with those kinds of people. Okay. 
Okay. So now I'm just looking at this and thinking, do I need anything else? Maybe, maybe I need something here, or do I want to bring one of these guys forward? Hmm. And I look at my original here. Obviously, I've made some changes. There was one right here. So how about let's put another one right here. Now I feel like I need something here. Or do I? Oh, I've got one there now, whether, no matter what. I think that's okay. I feel okay with that. Okay, so, um, I mean, I like this picture as it is right now. I could see if, if there's somebody who's running low on time, you could probably call it quits right there and say, okay, well, that's good. I'm going to press forward, however, um, and I'm going to hit the blow dryer and just... Uh, Help bake all that in. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start adding some uh, light and dark to all of these light bulb things, as I've been calling them. Um, so we we have red that we've are is is our um, local color, as we would call it, and the local color is uh, let's say this cup. Its local color is red. Now, there are some highlights on it, and there are some shadows on it, right? But the main color is red. That's the local color. You know, another example would be, you know, this uh, stuffed animal of my daughter's, right? Its local color is white, but, you know, if we really start looking into some of the shadows, right, even if I hold my hand up here, the shadows aren't just gray, but we might have a little bit of blue in there, right? And let's say, for instance, let's say if I hold, you see how if, if I'm holding this cup kind of up against the, the doll, right at the back of its head there, how that color is now like a, a purple, reddish kind of dark shadow, right? So even though it's local colors white, its shadow is not just gray, but it's there's additional color in there. And one of the things that a lot of artists do um, that works really effectively 
is whenever you're um, if you're if you're making shadows often what people do is they use the complementary color excuse me the complementary color is the opposite color the color that complements that color on the other side of the color wheel so often people will use let's say if I'm painting red a little bit of green in the shadows let's say you're painting an apple you might want to put a little bit of green in the the, the darker side um, so you probably move towards I'm gonna I probably let's if we look at the original you know they they don't have any gr green in the shadows but they are kind of moving towards there we're using some purples so we could we've we've got a, I would say purple would work really well in here we, you can put a little bit of green into the the darker side of things so let's um, let's kind of mix some colors here. Just gonna move. I like this already. I'm actually quite ha happy with with it as it as it is. But as I said, I'm gonna continue moving forward. Um, so with my shadow, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix a little bit of a purple. So I'm gonna t we've got this. I'm gonna take a cool red and my warm blue, we mix those together, we get a nice purple, right? And it's, because it's got warm and cool in there, it's kind of neutral. So that's a nice kind of dark color. Now it might be a little intense to put on there right now. So I'm gonna mix it in. So I'm gonna take some slow dry medium, put that to the side. And I'm going to take, this is warm red here. I've been mix, using it here, but I'm going to take some of that. And let's just mix a darker red. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with this and then I'm going to maybe do another I'll do it again and go a little bit darker but this is probably enough just to kind of get us started here so and I'm going to use probably my smallest brush pretty much for the rest of the painting I think so I'm going to take this darker color And um, let's look at both of these views side by side here. Okay. So the other thing that we want to think about is even though the light appears to be coming from this side, you know, and if we want, we could also hang the painting this way afterwards. Actually, I think that might look even better. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We'll see how when it's done, what it looks like. But even though the light is coming from this side, we still have some reflected light coming from this. Like, so if we look at this shape, we can see obviously it's much brighter here and its darkest area is right there. And then we've got a little bit of light reflecting from behind, maybe from another one of these coronaviruses that are floating around. In the original image, there's a bunch of them all over the place. I decided one is enough. So, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to maybe leave a little bit of a halo a bit here, right? So, and as we paint, we may, even when we go and do some of these darker sides, we might have the darker not go all the way to the edge. Anyway, well, let's, let's start doing this here. Um, or did I blow dry this? Is everything dry? Let's just take a quick second to make it tight. So how about we'll start kind of up here and I'm going to I 
I put the slow dry medium in so I could also do a little bit of blending if I wanted. So where's my blending brush, right? I can take this and just kind of softly soften. Just want to be careful that I don't get too much. Um, you can also, even if you don't want to use a really big brush, I could use something even smaller. push around some of that paint. So right now that effect is pretty minimal. Um, but I would say starting a little bit slower and building up would be the be ideal rather than just rushing right in and see how I'm just sort of basically just darkening one whole side here. This also kind of helps us start to kind of differentiate some of these different shapes. And just always kind of thinking like, where's the light coming from? Light is coming from this side, right? So that means we're gonna see the highlights on the top and then as we move towards here they start getting darker and darker and darker Um, also, you know, in the original image that you see there on the left, there's, I love the, that kind of strawberry or raspberry kind of texture on there. All those little dots. I think that is super cool. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get any of that in today's painting. That, that would be, you know, if you want to spend an extra th two or three hours doing all of that, or, or more at least, be my guest. Um... It would look really cool, but it's just too much for my purposes anyway. With these ones back here, I think I don't I don't mind going just covering them all completely with this slightly darker color. Because there's really I mean, even though there's going to be reflected light from over here, they are going to be darker anyway, right? So, Do you see how all of a sudden it now is starting to, to, to become th more three-dimensional? Like it just starts to kind of pop and come to life. And we've just 
these are what we're doing here just as a little little like C shapes on the side and all but it it really it really brings this form into three dimensions which is really exciting and we're not really having to work that hard to make that happen either use this other brush here just to maybe soften some things up a little bit. So that was, that's a very, very subtle little addition to the painting. In some places, it's almost hard to see what we've actually done, but there is a little bit of a change, right? You can see there's that light now seems to be brighter here. We, we're going to add some highlights on all of this, um, but I'm going to say we should go a little bit darker again. So... Um, in fact, let's just, I'm just going to get the paint off of here and just wipe this brush off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this paint and just mix it in as I kind of go. So I got this darker color. Let's take a look and think about where we can put it. Now in an ideal world, I might do a few steps between that color and this color, the previous color and this one. But I'm in a bit of a hurry, so I'm just going to go right to a much darker color or uh, shade in. Again, as you're painting, you can use another brush, even just a very uh, similar brush, maybe a little bit larger, just to kind of smudge things in a bit. So I'm just leaving a little bit of this little halo right here from that, that one that's in front. The other thing that you want to think about is the things that are closest to us are going to be the 
are going to have the highest amount of contrast. They're both going to be the brightest and the darkest. And as things go back and around the shape, they get less contrast. So if you want to go, if you want to do another layer of dark after that, that would only be for, let's say, these ones on the front, right? And versus none on this. We'll see, because I think we'll do a little bit of that. But I just want to kind of point that out at this stage too, because depending on how dark you're going, and you can see I haven't used any black whatsoever in this painting, and I won't. I won't. I don't don't need it. Don't want it. It's not helpful. So, but if I was to use black. It would only be on the the ones that are on the front of this f of the larger form of the virus here. I just need a little bit more slow dry medium. Things are getting a bit tacky in here. Just keeping in mind that the more slow dry medium I put in there, it's going to make it a little bit more transparent. So you want to just be a little bit careful about being too heavy handed with it. You know, if we're doing this kind of thing, um, being a little more transparent, it just means that you're actually going to have it. It's a little bit more cautious, right? It's just going to make it might take a little bit longer to build up darker areas on the picture. As I said, as I start coming down into some of these here, I'm going to leave a little sliver of the of the previous darker color around there so that uh, we have a bit of that reflected light on the other side of the shape here. If you're if you're not able to do it, don't worry. It's not not a huge deal. It's not going to make the picture fall apart, but it does add a little bit more, I guess, believability to the picture and makes it look a little bit more realistic because every we're surrounded by reflective light constantly. Like everything is reflecting light onto everything else.
sometimes that reflected light is very obvious and easy to see and sometimes it's it's quite subtle but like my body is reflecting light off of my shirt onto the canvas Right, everything is just slowly getting more and more volume. The next thing we'll do, maybe even before we put the highlights in, I think we'll tackle a little bit of the underlying form in here because uh, right now it's very, it's totally flat. And we've got all these shapes now that have all this volume on top of them. And that this big flat shape is kind of flattening all of the all of the work we're doing so adding some volume to it will help um, these forms All these guys back here, they're going to be almost entirely all dark. Although, again, a little bit of reflected light around their edges. And you can go over top of these things, rather than mixing another color that's a little bit darker, even just using the same color again because it's, it's a little bit transparent. I put um, a good amount of slow dry medium, maybe one to one in there. So okay. In fact, before I move on, I think I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to blow dry this because otherwise I'm just going to be pushing paint around. I want to be able to add a layer on it. Okay, so in the chat there, Lori says, I'm thinking about trying to paint the raspberries. I'm not sure, as it would take a lot of time, I'm also not sure how I would do it. Any tips? Well, good question. Um, the thing is, like, I'll, let me just show you kind of, when I say it would take a lot of time, basically what we've done, you'd have to do, let's see, let's zoom in on, Uh, 
right? If we look at this here, look at how all we'd have every single one of these things has a reflected light. It's got a dark side and a highlight. So you're talking about doing like for, you know, we've got one of these spots. You'd have to do, let's say 30 little tiny dots on each one. Um, so you, you're talking about adding tons and like 30 dot, 30 little raspberry like spots onto each one of them, which um, I don't know that that's why it's, it would be way too much for me. If you wanted, you could kind of fake it a little bit by just adding, you wouldn't have to paint each one of them. You could just add little tiny, like if I was to just do a quick detour on this, you might do something like paint, oops. So you're not making hundreds of them, but you're making, right? So we would have, and you could, you could start doing that right now. Like you could, you, you wouldn't have to start over or do anything else because right now we've sort of got the basic kinds of, um, the, the darker and lighter parts, but now you'd just be adding more and more detail into the painting at this particular point. Um, so I'm gonna continue here using the same color, not adding or darkening or anything. I'm just putting another layer of it, which I think is just as effective you can see it, it, it darkens things pretty well. Okay, so I think, you know, 
when I'm done... this here shortly I will and I'm also probably not going to put too many too much of this darker color right here just because they're getting the full brunt of light so there might only be a few places where they're going to be at that level of darkness anyway So it takes a little bit of time to kind of build this up, but I think you can see the results are, are pretty quite satisfying, right? Okay, um, yeah, I, I could go out there. I will go a little bit darker in a few of those, but I think what I want to do now is I want to tackle that that shape inside here because I've been promising to do that for a while and I just keep on doing other things on here. So let's just clean these brushes up. <laughs> Changed your mind, Laurie. Yeah, I mean it's not uh, out of. It's just it's just time. It's just how much time you want to put into the painting. If you did it, even little hints of it, it would be really cool. It would it would turn out really well. It's just you know how much time are you willing to put in, and that's why I say I want to build the painting up to like right now. If I walked away. Again, I would be happy walking away, just as I was about 45 minutes ago when I had just painted the little the red in, but didn't put any shading on them. I could also walk away right now. That's why I want to be I want to be able to walk away at any time and feel like, yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, if I yeah, if I, if I could put two more hours in, it would look even better, sure. But I could versus. Can you imagine if we did one of these? in that raspberry one of them was just absolutely gorgeous but the other ones were just still white right they didn't even like you'd be like well that's really satisfying and it's so good that now i feel like i gotta spend another five or six hours getting everything else to that highly finished level and i often see a lot of paintings that are left over with one perfect thing and everything else is unfinished so, a tea break here. So let me think. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this here. What do we want to do? Uh, we want a different color than these red uh, spots. So you could paint this really any color you like. Um, which would be, what would be a good color? We've got blue. Um, you know, obviously I like this, what we've got here. But I want to, I think I want to try to avoid. Just thinking to myself. Do I want to go purple again? We've just put purple here. I think I might make an orange, and I might make this a little bit brown and green. So I might actually do a little bit of green in here. Because I think I want a nice contrast between this red. 
And I'm a little afraid if I go purple over top of this, it's going to be very too similar to this. Okay, so we'll just kind of, I'm going to mix it and then you can decide. Okay, so I need a little bit, I guess I got a bit of red here. I'll put that off to the side. Um, and which green should I do? I think I'm going to make a bit of a more lime green here. Which is a cool green. But I'm, but since I'm painting um, this here, which already has warm color underneath, putting a little bit of a cooler color over top, and I'm going to have warm red in there, I think is going to help balance it out. So... Cool yellow and cool blue. Let's mix this together. Great, nice color. Now on its own, I don't want to paint this in there. That would be kind of too crazy. Um, I'm going to turn this. I th let me see. We'll just. I'm just going to try here. So let's say if I take. So I kind of like this. I know it's, it looks pretty gross right now, but it's it's like a greenish brown. And I'm going to put this I'm, Let me I'm going to use that in a second. I'm going to mix a little bit more of that orange so we'll have it as a highlight. Okay, so I'm going to mix. That. And I got white already. Let's take a bit of white. The other thing too, this surface has got a lot of texture, and that's that can be a lot of fun to paint. It might be a little bit tricky though, so we'll see how much. Let's put some slow dry medium in here. So this color I just mixed up, let's see if I paint this on here, okay that works nice, okay. So I'm going to paint a lot of, in fact let's just do this whole side this color. So it gives me an opportunity to kind of clean up some of these shapes. Thank you. 
So it looks very red on the screen. Not quite as mine's not nearly as red as that, but I did. I have to adjust the color balance on the camera because I've been noticing it's a little red tinted, red. Uh, a red hue to it. So really what this is, it, this is a very peachy color that I've just painted here. And just for the, I'm just going to paint this all over the whole surface. So it looks a little radioactive when I look at it on, on the screen right now. Okay. So that's this is kind of like our, our local color, our brighter color. Now we're going to go, I'm going to add this color that we've mixed, this green, into this, right? put a bunch of uh, slow dry medium into here. Let's just kind of mix that up. And then I'm going to take this other color, the green that I got here, and stir some of this in. It kind of is going to give it a, a dull Kind of brownish color. If I want, I might need to go darker here as we go. We'll see. Or I will need to go darker, but um, anyway. So let's. I'm going to take my smaller brush, and it's wet here, but I don't mind that. So let's. Um, kind of start around this side here and kind of work my way around here. There's obviously there's these shadows. Now the shadow should be trying to kind of go in the same, you know, it's a ball, so they're kind of going to want to round around.
Okay. So I'm just going to keep on, I think as I get a little bit closer to this side, I can just take my bit of a bigger brush. See how I'm kind of just trying to blend this out so that there's a bit of that brighter color that's underneath still shining a little bit on this other side. Okay, getting there. So, I actually quite like how dark that is. I feel like that part of the painting is pretty effective right now. This side is, is a little bit flat, so I'm going to darken that shadow in. Um, I don't know how much of that, the, the adding again, just like those little raspberry qualities, adding all the texture into this surface is re just requires more time. I'm looking at the clock. I'm kind of starting to think uh, I might be wanting to wind down shortly here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add more blue into this mixture. So I just took some cool blue put it into here to make a darker color. And I'm just going to blast this with some heat and just help dry that down. So let's continue. So if this is the bright side, we're going to put a 
bright reflection right here. So our darker side is, is in this area. See, I'm painting with a kind of a pretty small brush for a lot of this here. I find I, when I start getting into the, the, towards the end of a painting, it's mostly just like small brush movements here. Because of the way that I paint, I kind of build up the, these kind of larger areas of color and then I just get slowly slowly more and more and more detail so I'm gonna leave so the darkest part is gonna be in this here Okay, and then with some of this darker, I'm just going to put a bit of darker stuff right next to some of these. Right in the beginnings of the shadow there. Okay, and then let's go darker still. I'm gonna take some warm blue, warm and cool blue. We'll put these here. Let's get a bit of uh, red. All right, so we've got kind of like, it's like a blue. Well, it's not blue. It's, this is like a kind of a dark bluish gray, I would say. Greenish, bluish gray. And then, you know, if we look at the original, like look at where the darkest part of that picture is, right here. Now I've kind of moved, <laughs> it looks at the lights a little bit higher up, so, but 
So I'm going to put this dark, dark color in this area here. In fact, I'm just going to quickly brush some of it around. Hmm. Um, I'm curious if this is still working. Are you guys still there? Can somebody let me know if it's still there? YouTube just did something very strange. I hope it didn't uh, short out like it did the other day. anybody watching please let me know if you could still see me or hear me hmm, I don't see any comments which makes me quite anxious oh it's still working okay good Whew. That was weird. The page just suddenly reloaded, which it's never done after a year of doing this, so. Okay. There's a lot of kind of new things. I've got a, a different camera here. We've got a much faster uh, internet connection now. And so with all those new things, all these new variables, it's like, you know, always it's like, oh, what else could go wrong? Okay, 
So a few things like as I notice when I'm doing this, you see how some of these now seem like almost like too bright. So I have to kind of darken this a little bit. But otherwise things are looking pretty good, I think. This patch just needs to, some of it just needs to dry because I'm just pushing paint around there. And while I got that darker color, just put a little bit of that darker, darker in just a few little places. There's a bit of white there that kind of drives me nuts, so let's just take care of that. So I get my head in the way just for a brief second. So this might be a little bit bright for reflected light, but um, let's just see. So I feel, I mean, I'm pretty happy with, with um, this dark color around here. I'm just touching up around these shapes. I think what I need to do now is put the highlight on that side and that will really help and then maybe darken put put highlights on these and then we'll be pretty close to being done I think wonder what happened with YouTube. Why it did that? I always have to, every time I get frustrated with this kind of stuff, I always have to remember the fact that it, I'm able to do any of this at all is pretty remarkable. So, can't really complain. I mean, this sort of doing this kind of thing a couple of years ago would have been really really difficult you know I'd have to be working in a television station or something to be able to broadcast out to millions of people potentially around the world so Okay, so one quick little thing. I'm gonna go back to a little bit of a lighter color that I had uh, kind of underneath a lot of this. And I'm just gonna go a little bit, I'm gonna go over top of this stuff here and darken it. Just 
brightened it up a bit. And I meant to go darker, but... I need to blow dry that. It's getting too tacky and I'm just scrubbing paint. Right? go a bit darker here. a bit that's good okay so let's get the highlight in here so we've been going darker and darker and darker which is great so now this side remember remember how I was saying like previously that side felt really good and this side felt like unfinished now this side feels much better and this side feels unfinished which is a good thing right that, that means that you know, I'm, I've kind of like, this was this was great, but it left made the other side feel a little. So it's it's always like building things up and up and up and up and as we go, right? Again, if I had to leave right now, I think I could be, I wouldn't be the the happiest, but I would be I I could walk away and I'd feel like I've got most of what I need here. I want to put, I have a little bit of this same mixture that was left over, which was my warm yellow and warm red. I mixed that together here. In fact, I might do just a little bit more of it. Upstairs, babbling to herself. It's pretty adorable. So I might make this a little bit more on the yellow side of things. Right there, that's pretty much the same color that 
that I put down right here. All right, just warm yellow, warm red. But let's scoop a bunch of it out. And let's put it here next to the white. And we're going to go into the white here. We'll start brightening things up. And we'll, uh, I don't know if we'll, we'll get closer. We, we won't, maybe we'll go white. We'll see. Let's just see how we go. Because one thing is the, the dark, your darkest darks also dictate how white or bright your highlights are. If you have really, really dark, dark, dark shadows, then you're going to want to go on the other extreme, right? So it's always, you're always thinking, that's why I kind of like go a little bit further out this way. That way you don't have super, super dark. And then here, you always kind of want everything to be kind of slowly expanding outwards. Otherwise, it's going to look a little bit funny. So let's take a smallish brush. Oh, let's get some, a little dab of slow dry medium. Again, I, I like using the slow dry medium in this when I'm doing lots of blending. Um, because also it's it makes it a little bit less or, or more transparent, less opaque, and so it it makes whatever I do a little bit more subtle, and that way I have a little bit I can control how intense things get. So I'm just brush that in, blend it in a bit. I think I probably need a lot more of it, but The other thing I'm doing, I'm just looking at the shape of this thing. I don't think it, it doesn't have to be a circle, but uh, I want to make sure that when it disappears behind some of these other shapes, that it all connects back together again. This is pure white here. So I'm going a little bit extreme. And I'm going to blend it back out.
I'm going to have to kind of blend some of this back in. I want a little... Uh, there's that. I don't like how hard that this white line is, but I, I, I don't want to touch it while everything's drying. So I'll let it dry and then I can kind of touch it up in a bit. I'm going to do the same thing, put a little bit of white into the uh, red here. So let's just take some red, get a little bit of white in here. And some slow dry. Okay. And then we're not going to do it to all of them. Probably none, nothing on this side. But we will... Um, Just kind of gives these, and don't be afraid if some of the, like you lose, they they kind of disappear a little bit um, into the shape of the main part of the <laughs> virus, I guess. Um, like right here, that's okay. People will still be able to register that those are different shapes. can always come back and add a little bit of red into these two. So if I go too far, I can dial it back. Uh, our next episode on Tuesday of next week for our master class series, we are going to paint probably the most famous painting of all time, uh, the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. which I'm pretty excited about. We're obviously, you know, it's it's a 
that painting I think took him years I, I can't remember how many years it's uh, like three or four years so we're not going to spend three or four years on it we'll spend maybe three or four hours on it um, but uh, I mean we can do a pretty good job in that short amount of time One thing to adding white to these things is it kind of dulls them down a little bit. You see that? How it kind of just, they lose a little bit of their intensity. That's why I think I'm going to come back and add a little bit of red back into some of these over top, even of some of the red of this white. Obviously, I'm kind of hurrying around here and Okay, I want to try to wrap things up in about 15 minutes at the latest. If you found this at all helpful, um, I would appreciate uh, you liking and subscribing to the channel, letting your friends know. I would love to see your version of today's painting. You can upload them to the Facebook group. There's a private Facebook group. I think we're, I don't know, I think 75 or so people belong to that group now. Speaking of community, which I think is the coolest thing. I it just drives. I just sometimes I just I, I go on there late at night, right before bed, and I just look at at the work. Um, I don't even like comment or anything because I know when I start doing that, I'll go. I'll just fall down the rabbit hole. But I just look and think like, wow, this is so cool. There's so many people who are watching and painting along, and and now a lot of people are creating their own things and uploading them there and the more people that are, are are painting in their spare time the better the better our world will be All right again that's another great if we can think of it as a great thing um of app as a result of covid is all these people uh, many of the, uh, 
of them are you guys that listen to me right now who um, started painting again or for the first time and um, that's just like I think this is probably of all the, the hobbies a person could have the most positive so relaxing I love painting and then realizing hours and hours have gone by. Like, just now, like, oh my goodness, it's like 7.15. Like, how did, like, I thought I looked at it 20 minutes ago, and it was 6.30. And time just flies. Um, so I could keep on adding all these little highlights. You know, you could see me go, going kind of slowly, just adding them as I go, and then looking and adding and looking and and trying to make sh see if they all kind of fit in and they're all believable. And um, the the again the 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 ones that need the most light are the ones in the foreground. Oops, that's too much. Way too. Much. <laughs> Paul says, can we do it by uh, Zoom so we could see one another? That would be great. Um, should have like a, a Zoom hangout or something. Okay, so now you, I start feeling like, okay, now that side's working really well. Now do I need to do anything over here? So just as I've, I've brightened all of these, it now makes me feel like some of these need to actually go a little bit darker in their shadows. So I'm going to... I just need a little bit of red in a few of these. A few of these went a little bit... Um, too dark in places or too white in places so just adding a bit of red over top So this red kind of, some of them kind of went a little gray, like especially where I blended over top of some of the darker areas. And this red sort of, it'll dry a little more transparent, so it's gonna kind of work well as a transition back into the other one, which after all, it was red in its in, at its core anyway, right? So. Um, okay. 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to being able to walk away here. Darn it, I realized it. There was that stuff in there. Is that paint all dry already? It looks like maybe can I scoop a bit? I love that slow dry medium for being able to go back when the paint like has kind of seized up a bit and I see, oh no, some of the stuff I needed to touch up and like this. You know, it's, this is like oil paint. Oil paint is, is like this where I can just go, oh, I forgot this here. Oh, let's just we come back a week later. My palette's still nice and wet. It's a little tricky, too, because this, I have a lot of light blasting on here. So my view is different than the camera's view. So that's why sometimes you see me looking at the monitor here to make sure what what I'm seeing or I don't have any glaring problems that I can't actually see because of the glare. Hmm. Can I walk away right now? Um, I think just want to soften that white edge, I think, a little bit. You can see why Leonardo or whatever, or any other artist would spend years working on a painting is you kind of like, you do one thing here, you do another thing there, and then you got to make that integrate, and then you, so. It's a process. I definitely think things could go much darker here. But um, I'm gonna do I'm I'm gonna do a few of these darker, just like I did the, the highlights brighter on the foreground. And then I'm gonna have to call it a day. So let's get a dark color mixed up again. Our darkest color, cool blue, warm blue, warm red, and a, a little bit of yellow. All right, so this really dark, dark, dark. <laughs> just barely, like just, it's the, the last little bits of paint on my palette here. Put some slow dry medium in there because that's going to help make it a little bit more transparent i can wipe things away if they don't work okay and just a blending brush 
already? Okay. That might be a little too too dark. Let's put mix it in with some of this red from before. So it's these ones right on the top that are getting the darkest. That's cool. I think, yeah, this is definitely the final thing that we'll do here. You could feel how, like, they, these darker ones also kind of pop forward a bit, too because they kind of stand out a little, a little bit more. You know, I'm not even sure which one. some of them. I, I'm like, did I paint that out, do that already or not? I can't remember. Sometimes, you know, you gotta go over a few of these a few times, and they all change based on what's around them, too, right?
One thing about you know painting is this stage around this time my eyes start getting a little bit crossed. I usually wear contacts uh, or I wear contacts, but I, I, I uh, if I'm painting on my own and I'm not <laughs> uh, in front of the camera, I often wear my I usually wear my glasses because I find after you know three hours of painting my eyes start to kind of merge so that's where I'm at right now with like well I'm having a little bit of difficulty <laughs> starting to make out some of these details that's the Getting older. Last few looks here. Looks pretty good. I, I'm, right now I'm just looking to see... Is there anything else here that... desperately needs to go darker Okay. I think I think I can walk away at this point. Okay. Um those brushes in there before they harden all up. Ah, okay. Grim anniversary of COVID-19 pandemic. I also, you know, I, when I was putting this together, I was thinking about how we just painted the Georgia O'Keeffe in it. Kind of, you know, a similar kind of central image in the center and that this would make kind of a good contrast or um, to it. This is, this is definitely one of the stranger paintings I have ever made. Um... I could work on it a little bit longer, but I feel pretty satisfied with where we got after this uh, relatively short amount of time. It feels like we've been painting for a while, but considering um, how much longer we could spend on it, you know, I feel feel like we got the the, the most important stuff down there. Okay, very cool. If you um, wanted, 
there is a link to the PayPal where you could send a small or large donation to help contribute. That's how everything you see was, has been paid for through your donations. So I very much appreciate all of those of you who've been contributing over the past year. Some of you have been around with me for a long time, and I really appreciate that. It's amazing that I've um, uh, had so many people who've been willing to follow me down this crazy long path. Um, so there's also, also, if you want to send a um, transfer or a check, you can contact me through Facebook or my website. Um, yeah, in a couple of days, we're going to be, be, well, not a couple, next Tuesday, we'll be painting the uh, Mona Lisa by Van, or Van Gogh, Leonardo da Vinci. And that's going to be fun. That's uh, I'm looking forward to doing that. That, that we're going to really um, we'll do some glazing. So you want to have your uh, glazing fluid because that's glazing fluid, and or slow dry medium. Either or both will work very will work just as fine. The 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 glazing liquid just dries faster. So we can do everything we've been doing. It just goes a little bit faster. Um, so if you don't have a hair dryer, glazing fluid would, would be helpful. Okay, everybody. Well, thank you again for joining me, for uh, coming into my studio, and for... I know not this was probably not the most popular painting, not the one that people want to hang in their house, but I think you could probably see we certainly learned a lot. Um, any of the stuff we learned here could be applied for all sorts of various different applications. So thanks again, um, and... Yeah, I think I'm out of things to say. My brain's a little bit dead and foggy. Um, I see here... Ah, look at all the people talking about... Uh, Deborah finished hers. Um, she still has to finish her orchid painting. Uh, it says it was another great class. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Heidi says... Um, uh, says, looks good. Mine is taking another direction <laughs> one of these days. I, I can't wait to see what, what you guys did. Did you use the same colors? Did you do something a little bit different? Lori says, I now have five paintings that I've begun. I don't have a lot of time to paint, so I may have to finish some and stop starting new ones. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you know, I think one of the things... You could start the painting, and if you don't like it, then you can. there's no reason that you have to finish it. I think about that with books, too. Right? You have, I remember reading a great book called How to Talk About Books You Haven't Read, which I got as a joke for my dad for Christmas, and then I ended up reading the whole thing over Christmas. And one of the things it talks about is you don't have to finish a book just because you started it. And that was a, you know, a big, a light bulb went off. It's like, oh, because often I give myself all this guilt of all the books that I've begun or that I own that I haven't read. And it's like, you don't have to, you can start a book. I mean, if you don't, it's just like watching a movie. You're like, ah, you know what? I'm done. Same thing with a painting. You know, if you, if you're, if you get what you need out of that painting, then you can move on. And if you're not liking the way it looks, you can move on. Having said that, something is kind of nice about bringing them to a resolution. Um, anyway, thank you, everybody. We'll see you in uh, next week. And until then, enjoy the rest of your evening, your weekend. Stay safe, everybody, as our painting today reminds us to wash your hands and wear a mask all the way until all of this is just a faint memory and fun stories that we can tell our grandchildren, right? Okay, everybody, we'll see you very much soon. I look forward to it. Talk to you then. Good night, everybody.